happy Wild Wednesday. We are going to learn about some wild animals today in honor of our Spirit Week. I have a really cool true story to tell you. It is, I guess, nonfiction. Nonfiction means that it's real, right? Well, this is a real story about two wild animals named Owen and Maisie. And they are two wild animals that I would never think of seeing together. A hippo and a tortoise. Have you ever seen a hippo and a tortoise together? Me neither. This is the true story of a remarkable friendship. The story was told by Isabella Hatkoff, Craig Hatkoff, and Dr. Paula Kahumbu. It has photographs, real photographs, of Owen Maisie taken by Peter Grest. So let's get into this wild animal story and hear about how this strange friendship came to be. This is the true story of two great friends. A baby hippopotamus named Owen and a 130 year old giant tortoise named Maisie. Did you hear that? 130 years old, wow. The hippo was not always friends with the tortoise. He wasn't always known as Owen, and Owen was not always famous the world over. And here is how it all happened. Before the baby hippopotamus became known as Owen, he lived with his mother in a group or pod with about 20 other hippos. They fed and wallowed in and around the Sabaki River in Kenya, a nation on the east coast of Africa. When he was about one year old, heavy December rains flooded the river. The racing water washed Owen and his family down the river until the fresh water became salty and the river flowed into the Indian Ocean near the small coastal town of Malindi. For days, the people of Malindi tried to chase the hippos back up the river. But the hippos enjoyed grazing the grasses along the shore and in the villagers' yards. Since hippos are the most dangerous animals in Africa, and a full-grown adult can weigh as much as 8,000 pounds, there was little that the people could do. On the morning of December 26, 2004, the sea suddenly rushed high onto the beaches and surging waves pounded the shore. Many of the villagers' boats were damaged and many fishermen had to be rescued. Before long, the sea was calm again, but it was a frightening time for everybody. A day passed before anyone thought to check on the hippos. The villagers now saw only one hippopotamus in the sea, a baby without his mother, stranded on a sandy coral reef among the seagrass. Tired and frightened, he was unable to reach the shore on his own. That might look like a rock, but it's not. That's Owen, the baby hippo. Soon, hundreds of villagers and visitors were working together to help the young hippo. They knew that he would become sick if he stayed in the salty seawater for long. They used ropes, boats, fishing nets, and even cars to try to rescue him and bring him ashore safely. It was soon clear that a rescue would not be easy. Though the baby hippo was only about two feet tall, he weighed a hefty 600 pounds and was slippery and strong. And the hippo was alarmed by all the human commotion. Angrily, he broke through their nets and escaped from their ropes. Hours went by and the anxious crowds of people who gathered to watch feared that the hippo could not be saved. Finally, with a stronger shark net, the rescuers were able to catch the hippo. A brave visitor named Owen Sobian tackled him, stopping him long enough to let others secure the net. That is why when it came time to choose a name for the hippo, it seemed only right that he should be called Owen. 
At last, the rescuers towed the baby hippo toward land. When they reached the shore, a loud, joyous cheer went up from thousands of men, women, boys, and girls who now crowded the beach. Their happy cries could be heard almost a mile away. Wrapped in the net, Owen was hoisted into the back of a pickup truck and brought to a shady spot. People weren't sure where Owen should be taken next. They called Holler Park, an animal sanctuary about 50 miles away near the city of Mombasa. Dr. Paula Kahumbu, the manager, immediately offered Owen a place to live there. She explained that he could never be returned to the wild. Since he was still a baby, he wouldn't have learned yet how to fend for himself. And he would never be welcomed into another hippo pod. He would be seen as an intruder and attacked. But they would take care of him, good care of him, in Holler Park. Dr. Paula offered to drive to Melindy herself to bring Owen to his new home. Dr. Paula knew that she would need help. So she asked the chief animal caretaker, Stephen Tui, to come along with her. She knew that Stephen had a special way with animals. Some people said he could even talk to them. Dr. Paula and Stephen quickly set off in her small truck to Melindy. Meanwhile, ecologist Sabine Bear got to work with others at Holler Park to prepare for Owen's arrival. When Dr. Paula and Stephen arrived in Melindy, they helped to remove the nets and lead Owen out of the pickup. But Owen became angrier than ever, and he charged at the people that gathered around. They tried to help him calm down by wrapping a blanket around his head. That way, he wouldn't see the things that were upsetting him. But Owen was angry about that too. After many hours, about a dozen rescuers managed to move Owen from the pickup into Dr. Paula's truck, tying him so that he would be safe during the long drive to Holler Park. Poor baby, I bet he was scared. Meanwhile, Sabine and other workers prepared a large enclosure for Owen. They chose a part of the park that had a pond and a mud wallow, as well as tall trees and brush everything a hippo could want. The area was already home to a number of bush bucks, vervet monkeys, and a giant aldabra tortoise called Maisie. Maisie, whose name means wise old man in the Swahili language, was the oldest creature in the park. At about 130 years of age, he had been alive since before Stephen's great-grandmother was born. He wasn't very friendly, except to Stephen, who seemed to know just what he liked, such as getting tickled under his chin. <laughs> Otherwise, Maisie kind of kept to himself. No one could have guessed how Maisie's life was about to change. Whoa. Finally, Dr. Paula and Stephen arrived with Owen, who was now weak and exhausted. As soon as the ropes that held him were untied, Owen scrambled from the truck directly to Maisie, resting in a corner of the enclosure. Owen crouched behind Maisie the way baby hippos often hide behind their mothers for protection. At first, Maisie wasn't happy about this attention. He hissed at Owen and crawled away. But Owen, who could easily keep up with the old tortoise, did not give up. Slowly, as the night went on, Maisie began to accept his new companion. When the park workers checked on them in the morning, Owen was snuggled up against Maisie, and Maisie didn't seem to mind at all. That's pretty cool. Over the next few days, Maisie continued to crawl away, and Owen continued to follow him. But sometimes it was Owen who would walk away from Maisie, and then Maisie who would follow. Bit by bit, Maisie grew friendlier. At first, Owen wouldn't eat any of the leaves left out for him. 
Stephen and the other caretakers were worried that he would weaken even more. Then they noticed Owen feeding right beside Maisie, as if Maisie were showing him how to eat. Or perhaps it was Maisie's protective presence that helped Owen feel calm enough to eat. No one will ever know. But it was clear that the bond between Owen and Maisie was helping the baby hippo to recover from being separated from his mother and stranded in the sea. <laughs> kind of hard to see these pictures. They're camouflaged. There's Owen back there by Maisie. <gasps> and look, they're in the water. As the weeks went on, Owen and Maisie spent more and more time together. Soon, they were inseparable. Their bond remains very strong to this day. They swim together, eat together, drink together, and sleep next to each other. They rub noses. Owen leads the way to different parts of the enclosure, and then Maisie leads the way. Owen playfully nuzzles Maisie's neck, and Maisie stretches his neck forward, asking for more just as he does when Stephen tickles from under his chin. Though both animals could easily injure each other, they are gentle with one another. A sense of trust has grown between them. Wildlife experts are still puzzled about how this unlikely friendship came to be. Most have never heard of a mammal such as Owen and a reptile such as Maisie forming such a strong bond. Perhaps for Owen it happened this way. Young hippos like Owen need their mothers in order to survive. An old slow tortoise like Maisie can never protect Owen the way a fierce mother hippo could. But since Maisie's coloring and rounded shape are similar to a hippo's, it's possible that to Owen, Maisie looks like the hippo mother that he needs. Harder to explain is the affection that Maisie seems to show for Owen. Like most Aldabra tortoises, Maisie had always preferred to be alone. But sometimes these tortoises live in groups, and perhaps Maisie sees Owen as a fellow tortoise, the first tortoise he is willing to spend time with. Or perhaps Maisie knows that Owen isn't a tortoise, but likes him anyway. The reasons are unclear, but science can't always explain what the heart already knows. Our most important friends are sometimes those we least expect. The end. Wow! What a cool, unlikely story of two wild animal friends. I liked it. It was a really cool, true story. Thanks for listening. I hope you have a great day. Bye, friends.